So today's video is about bonds between molecules. We've done several videos about bonds between atoms. That's really different than these. The bonds between atoms would be this ionic, like Na plus Cl minus. This is actually bonds between ions, but that's bonds between atoms. Uh, metallic. And that's bonds between, this would be copper atoms. Uh, we had covalent. That would be bonds between non-metals, uh, like H2O or CO2 or NH3. So, these are all bonds between atoms. Like this, the water molecule will be bond between the oxygen atom and the hydrogen. Carbon dioxide, oxygen, and carbon. Ammonia, nitrogen, and hydrogen. These are all bonds between atoms. So now, the bonds between molecules are way, way different. So, watch. The first bond between molecules we're going to cover is called this. It's called a hydrogen bond. So, obviously hydrogen, the element hydrogen has something to do with this bond. Well, this bond isn't as strong as an ionic or a covalent but between molecules, it's pretty strong. And this bond is only found between strong polar molecules that can really attract each other. So, in other words, this bond is found between strong dipoles. And here are three of them. And in high school chemistry, you just have to know the bonds between strong dipoles, these three. So we have H2O, NH3, and HF. Those are, these are all strong polar molecules or strong dipoles. Remember, a dipole is unequal sharing of electron pairs, right? And these are all strong. How do you know they're strong? because of the electronegativity difference. Like this one, 2.2, 3.4, that's 1.2. And this is 0.8, and this is 1.8. So these are all strong dipoles. So the hydrogen bond is not between the H and the O of the same molecule. The hydrogen bond is between a bunch of H2Os. This is how it works. Now, this is H2O. O is very electronegative, so that's slightly negative. These are slightly positive. Remember, this should be a 90 degree angle between the H's, but oxygen is pulling the pairs of electrons so close to it that the hydrogens are very positive and they move out somewhere about 102 or 103 degrees. All right, now that is a water molecule. Well, what if another water molecule was next to it? Well, here's what it would look like. So. Here are two water molecules, all right? Remember, water is a very strong polar molecule, which means it's a strong dipole. So if the two water molecules were next to each other, this is what would happen. The positive H from one water molecule would really be attracted to the unshared pair of electrons. So right here, and right here, both of these would be hydrogen bonds.
So this one and this one. Both of those are hydrogen bonds. And as you can see, the hydrogen bonds are between the water molecules, not in the water molecule. So this bond is between strong dipoles. That's a hydrogen bond. Now, the cool part is this is for between molecules, this is a strong bond. And you've seen this before. I consider water sticky. It sticks together. If you have a piece of wax paper and you put a drop of water on there, it rolls up into a ball. Why would that roll up into a ball? Because all the water molecules are stuck together. Now, if you have a liquid that's not a strong dipole, like a petroleum product, maybe a lighter fluid or anything like that, they don't have hydrogen bonds between it because the molecules are symmetrical, which means they're nonpolar molecules. And if you put a drop of lighter fluid on the wax paper, it would flatten right out because they don't attract each other. The molecules won't attract each other. We'll get to that later on. So this is an example of a hydrogen bond between water molecules. And it gives water crazy properties. You've seen the meniscus on a graduated cylinder. Water creeps up the sides of the glass cylinder. If you put a paper towel in a drop of water, it climbs up, capillary action. Bugs or leaves can lay on water, surface tension, all sorts of crazy properties that it gives water. The other thing is, if water wouldn't have these strong hydrogen bonds between the molecules, there'd be no life on Earth because every time it would rain, the water would evaporate before it hit the ground. So this is very heavy duty. This is, these hydrogen bonds keep water together. Okay, so let's do another example of hydrogen bonding between a strong dipole. This is probably the best example of hydrogen bonding between strong dipoles and water molecules. All right. Next one, let's do this one. So, this is hydrogen fluoride. This F is 4.0, H is 2.2, it's 1.8. And a lot of my students go, hey, wait, 1.8, that's above 1.7. Why isn't that an ionic compound? Because there's no metal, all right? So fluorine really pulls the pair of electrons close. This is a very strong positive. So here are two very strong dipoles, and obviously the negative fluorine will attract the positive hydrogen of another one. And so there is your there's your hydrogen bond between strong dipole molecules. Between the F of one molecule and the H of the other molecule. Alright? And the other one is ammonia. But I think we're good with water and, and uh, hydrogen fluoride. Ammonia also has hydrogen bonds between the molecules. All right, now, next. I told you that H2O and H3HF are strong dipoles. Well, here's what makes them strong. Look, here's O. Here's N and here's F, H2O, NH3, and HF. Well, what do we know about these three nonmetals? We know that they are very small, the atomic radius is very small, and they're incredibly high electronegativity. So when hydrogen is bonded to a very small, super high electronegative element, 
it forms a strong dipole. And these strong dipoles, like we saw before, can attract each other. So if all my students in my class were water molecules, they'd all be stuck together. Oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.4, while hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.2. This makes it a super strong polar bond or a super strong dipole. Perfect. Okay, so this is the electron dot for H2O. Um, so since oxygen is so electronegative, it's pulling really hard on hydrogen's electrons, um, making it slightly negative and the hydrogen slightly positive. Perfect. This is what an H2O molecule looks like. We are going to pretend to be H2O molecules. Uh, our hands will be the positive H's and our heads will be the negative O. Um, Good. Water molecules are never found alone. They are stuck together by these bonds. The hydrogen bonds come from the molecules themselves, not from the individual atoms inside the molecules. Perfect. So this is a water droplet. And notice all the hands are H's, the heads are O's, and everybody's stuck together. That's why water is called sticky. This little experiment shows that water has a positive pole and a negative pole. The balloon is negative. Watch what it does to the water molecule. So this is a real cool experiment that my kids did. There's about 70 drops of water on this penny, and it's not even flowing over the sides, even though it's three times the height of the penny. What is happening is it looks like the water drop from the dropper is being sucked into the water molecule, which it is, because the water molecules at the surface don't have anything to hang on to, so the water molecules underneath and on the side are actually pulling them in, so water kind of has a skin. That's why a needle or a leaf can float on top of the water. I think it's really cool. This person got up to about 90 drops of water before it went over. So what you are watching is a really cool property of water. This is called surface tension. And that's, you know, water has tons of different things, capillary action, surface tension, and all that. But surface tension is one of the coolest because the water, as you see, isn't even hanging over the side of the penny yet. Same thing with NH3 or HF. Now, the interesting part about it is I said that it gives uh, the liquids pretty interesting properties. Going down any group, the mass of the substance gets heavier. So going down any group, the boiling point always increases going down any group, all right? Unless the substance is held together by hydrogen bonds. If the substance is held together by hydrogen bonds, it has a very high boiling point. So let's check one out. So we're going to check out the boiling points and we're going to go down group 16. And don't forget, as we go down a group, the boiling point should increase because the molecular size is increasing. Okay, so we should be increasing down any group, the boiling point. So let's check it out. Here's a graph I made. We're going down group 16. There's O, S, S, E, and T, E. They're all hooked to hydrogen. Now, it should look like this. Going down a group, the molecular size is getting bigger, so the boiling point should go up. So we should have something like there, 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 and there. We should have something that looks like that. And that would be going up. Okay, that's how it should normally look. But we know that this H2O is a strong dipole. H2S, H2S, E, H2TE are not. They're not very strong at all. So we just talked about strong dipoles can attract each other by hydrogen bonds. So because H2O is a strong dipole and has hydrogen bonds, its boiling point is not down there. Its boiling point is way up here, way up here. So now it goes like this and then over. So this is not there. Now, remember, this is water and this boiling point
That's what this graph looks like. The boiling point of water is way up there because it's a strong dipole held together by hydrogen bonds. While H2S, H2SE, H2TE, like I said before, these are weak dipoles. They can hold on to each other by dipole-dipole attraction, but that's nowhere near as strong as hydrogen bonding in water. Now, so going down groups, the water, the uh, boiling point usually increases, but at the top of group 16, you got a strong dipole. This could be the same for this next one. And the next one could be this, F, C, L, B, R, and I. Don't forget, they're all hooked to hydrogen. And notice, H, F is a wickedly strong dipole, so they can attract other H, Fs. That's why it's way up there again. These may not be the correct uh, boiling points, but this is what the graph looks like. Going down group 17, HF is very strong dipole, held together by hydrogen bonds. That's why its boiling point is way above HCl, HBr, and HI. So now let's review the properties of liquids that have hydrogen bonds between the molecules. First of all, hydrogen bonding is a strong intermolecular force. Intermolecular means between molecules. It has a very high boiling point like we saw in the graphs. And the other thing that we haven't talked about is it has a very low vapor pressure. In other words, vapor pressure is how fast or slow a liquid evaporates. So high boiling point, low vapor pressure. And it has great surface tension because the water molecules below the surface of the water are pulling the surface water molecules inward. So those are the primary properties of liquids held together by hydrogen bonding. The next video will be on the weakest intermolecular force which is called Van der Waals forces and that is between nonpolar molecules.